entered the city, something on their heads lit up. One moment, please, you two. It appears this is your first time visiting Sumeru City. Oh, yeah, that's right. But how did you know that? Because there's currently no information on either of you in the Akasha. But no need to worry, that won't prevent you from entering the city. In fact, the Academia conveniently provides each traveler to Sumeru City with a device. Perhaps you two have heard of the Akasha before. It's our beloved Greater Lord Rukadavata's lasting legacy, a treasure trove of collected knowledge. After centuries of tireless research on the Akasha, the Academia created one of its most ingenious inventions, the Akasha Terminal. As long as you are within Sumeru's borders, you may use an Akasha terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. I should mention that due to technical limitations, the operation of Akasha terminals will be much smoother and more effective in large cities such as Sumeru City and Port Ormos. Oh, so this is the thing that Tainari was telling us about. It sounds pretty amazing. You two are quite fortunate. Until recently, it was standard practice to only issue Akasha terminals to outlanders who spent an extended amount of time in Sumeru. However, this policy was recently changed, and now all travelers are issued one upon arrival. Here are your Akasha terminals. Please handle them with care. <laughs> it kind of looks like a leaf. To activate it, simply hold it in your hand and say the following phrase to yourself. <clears throat> May the mighty god bless us with their voice of wisdom. Oh, since this little doodad lets you access knowledge, maybe we can use it to find a way to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> May the mighty god bless us with their voice of wisdom. <gasps> Whoa! Just now, something clicked, and Paimon suddenly knew how to use this thing! It seems all we need to do is concentrate on what we want to know, and BAM! You get it! Oh, that'll come in real handy! Exactly! That is the power of the Akasha! And with that, let me officially welcome you both to Sumeru City! May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon always be your guide! Okay, now that we're in, we can check the Akasha about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let Paimon try. Hmm. <gasps> 500 years ago, the sages found a newly born deity from within some scorched ruins. The deity now resides in the sanctuary of Suristana. Hmm. Seems pretty similar to what Kali was telling us. Okay, next, let's concentrate on asking how to meet her. Huh? Uh, Hyman doesn't sense anything. Um. Hmm. The Akasha didn't respond to Paimon's question. Oh, come on! Ugh. Focusing on this question feels like when you have something you're trying to remember and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think of it. Ugh. Paimon's brain is exhausted. Oh, smart idea! But what are you going to ask it? Huh. Could it be because we're outlanders and we've only just arrived in Sumeru? You know, Maybe we're not qualified to receive an answer to this sort of question or something. Lead us 
to Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hmm. Guess our only choice now is to try meeting with the researcher that Tainari recommended. He's from Sumeru and even has a position in the academia. Maybe he'll be able to access more info from the Akasha. I will hold my head up high. I won't hesitate no more. I will find the strength so I can be the one right by your side. Don't give up, hope shining. Know now I will be there to protect you. No matter what will happen, all the tears that we have shed they show us that we have the strength we need. So let's go and face our fears, even though it gets so hard to believe in our shared dreams. We can let the hardships overwhelm and surprise us easily. Just as long as we endure on this journey together. We will find that if we don't give up, we'll get just what we need. As we see the source of light, of our future shining bright, we will find that tears and hardships are too fake for you and me. I won't hesitate no more, and I'll hold my head up high. All the wonders of this world I see when you're here next to me. Tainari wrote an address on the letter's envelope. Oh, it's not far from the city's gate. Let's head over and have a look. Hopefully he's at home. Hello, are you Rohawi? Yes, that's me. Can I help you? Great. You see, Tainari sent us here and... What? Tainari? I... Uh, please, th there's no need to say anything, really. Sure, I admit that the article I published last month wasn't my best work, and maybe the data didn't produce the most convincing results, but... Here! This is a letter from Tainari! Oh, let me see... Oh! Ooh, what a relief. You two nearly scared the life out of me. So, you two just have some questions for me? Seems even Tainari acknowledges my innate ability for procuring information. <laughs> So, what is it you two would like to know? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You mean you want to meet the Dendro Archon herself? Ah, uh, this isn't exactly my area of expertise, but let me see what I can find in the Akasha. Hmm. Sorry, the Akasha didn't respond to my query. What? You two? What about your abilities for getting information and all that? Uh, Paima was sure you'd be able to access more info than we did. Well, as I said, this isn't my area of expertise. I am but a lowly researcher, so the Akasha doesn't see a need for me to know more about the Dendro Archon. All I know is that ever since Lesser Lord Kusanali returned to Sumeru, she's never left the Sanctuary of Soristana or made a public appearance. Huh. Didn't expect her to be such a mysterious figure. The Dendro Archon is somewhat of a recluse. Perhaps she just doesn't want to entertain visitors, which would explain the lack of information in the Akasha. Aw, but then what can we do? <laughs> no need to worry just yet. I'm only hypothesizing here. You could certainly try asking around and see if anyone else has ideas. And besides, you two should consider the bright side of things. Not being able to see Lesser Lord Kusanali may not be a bad thing. In this world, there will always be information you cannot obtain from the Akasha and things you can never accomplish. Knowing when to yield is a form of wisdom. Take me, for example. It's a miracle if my brain cells can spit out one paper every three years. But Tainari? That guy can publish three papers in just a single year. Uh, okay. Thanks for your advice. Don't mention it. If you two ever want information about things like who's been promoted within the academia or relations between the six great sages, come find me. Hey, come on. This is a survival skill at the academia. Oh, Paimon's expectations were 
pretty low, but this is so low, it's like digging holes in the dirt. Oh. So what do we do now? Even if we want to talk to someone, we don't know anybody here. Huh? Like who? Oh, you're right! Catherine! The Adventurer's Guild has its own intel network. Let's hurry and find her. Anything else you'd like to ask about? Sage is the highest rank for an academia researcher. Since the institution's founding, each of the six great sages represent the finest mind and leader of their respective darshan. One grand sage is chosen from among the six sages to serve as the head of the academia. The current one is Sage Azar of the Ratawahist darshan. Since ancient times, the sages have contributed immensely to Sumeru. The widespread usage of the Akasha is thanks to their hard work. Anything else you'd like to ask about? <laughs> I just knew you'd be curious about that. Although the six Darshans conduct research in different disciplines, their sages frequently interact with one another when managing academia affairs. In the Immorta, our leader is Sage Nafis. His temper is legendary. We researchers are terrified of him, and even the Grand Sage gives him some leeway. He hasn't shown his face lately, though. Rumor has it that he's currently involved with some major project. Thankfully, he's been so busy that I was able to publish a paper. Anything else you'd like to ask about? See ya. Take a page out of my book and learn to look on the bright side of things. Ad Astra Abyssosk. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. Catherine, we need your help with something. Understood. The Adventurer's Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. I apologize, but I am unable to call up any relevant information in the Akasha. I'm also unable to locate any pertinent information in my personal memory. Aww, another dead end. Well, if Catherine can't help us, then we really don't know anyone else to ask now. Please do not worry. I may know of someone who can help you two. In Sumeru, the Adventurous Guild does not serve as the vanguard of information. Rather, there are numerous active mercenary groups collectively known as the Aramites. They take on various contracts and work all across Sumeru, so they naturally accrue intelligence. An Aramite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru City's defenses. Not only are they the oldest brigade, but they are responsible for managing and coordinating the affairs of all other mercenary brigades. Corps of Thirty? What a weird name! Supposedly, they are named as such because their ranks numbered 30 at their inception. Asfant, an advisor with the Corps of Thirty, maintains good relations with the Adventurer's Guild. Though he's already retired, he and his words carry great weight within mercenary circles. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you can find him at the Corps of Thirty's headquarters, the Citadel of Regzar. You're welcome. I wish you two the best of luck. We look forward to your exploits in Sumeru. Welcome. The Adventurer's Guild told me to expect you to. It's nice to meet you, Asfand. We'd like to ask you about something. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> it's true that the Aramite's network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Wait, seriously? That's it? <laughs> Afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious, so we don't know much about divinities. 
As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Since those days, we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. We don't beg gods for their aid. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in lesser lord Kusanali. Oh? Why's that? Just take the Academia, for example. They're the ones who truly rule Sumeru. Although they believe in gods, most of them only care for the late, greater Lord Rugadavada. In their eyes, she was the one who founded Sumeru and gifted us with the Akasha. Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with Greater Lord Rukadavada and hold her in greater esteem. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance, and the Academia never announces anything about her. As far as the people of Sumeru are concerned, she's just a god that exists. And that's all. Really? Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! But who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. Besides, I'm sure the God of Wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. All right. Well, thanks for the info, Osfond. <laughs> no problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurers Guild. A new request from the <sighs> Seems Osfund was right about most people's attitudes here. Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, If the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. We've been asking for information non-stop ever since we got to Sumeru. But the harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? Huh? Who are you? From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dunyarzad. One of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. Sure. It goes like this. Long, long ago, there was a man who heard a prophecy. It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in hopes that she would bless him, with the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. The man journeyed across deserts and through rainforests, and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. He then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. Okay, and then what happened? And then, the Calamity came. But to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. She said, O oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Along your journey, we were in every flower and blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, we'll be wherever you go. Yeah, thanks for the story! Paimon feels all warm and fuzzy inside after that. <laughs> uh, in a way, it seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. Dunyarzad, since you worship Lesser Lord Kusanali, 
Can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. So did you two know that, uh... uh I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. Someone. Hmm. Dunyarzad was acting super nervous just now. You think they're looking for her? Ugh. This stinks! We finally managed to find a lead about Lesser Lord Kusanali! We can't let them get in the way now! <sighs> Let's see if we can get rid of them. Then we can catch up with Dunyarzad! Hey, have you two seen a brown haired girl wearing a purple top and a long blue dress? We're looking for her. Did she have bandages wrapped around her wrists? Yes, that's her. Did you see which direction she went? Uh, yeah, she went that way. Quick, after her! <laughs> that should keep him busy for a while. Let's hurry and find Dunyar's on! Dunyarzad, we thought you might have been long gone by now. Oh, it's you two. Oh, you startled me there. You can relax now. We threw those people looking for you off the trail. Uh, really? Oh, thank you so much. Unfortunately, I believe there's still more of them out there looking for me. Uh-oh, looks like there are some coming this way. Huh? More of them? Then what are we standing here for? Run! No, wait, I... Uh... My body isn't in the best shape. Uh, it's difficult for me to run. Okay, sounds good. There's a tavern on the other side of the port we can go to. They probably wouldn't expect me to hide in a place like that. All right, let's move out. Stay behind us. We'll keep an eye out for anyone looking for you. Oh, we made it. Oh, they shouldn't be able to find us now. Wait! Stand down, Dia! My lady, who are these two? They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Wait a sec! And why are you shooing us away? I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. <sighs> My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. Hey! She doesn't want to go back. Why are you still pushing her? Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. How much? Wait, what? How much mora do I have to pay you to become your employer? So you never listen to my parents ever again. Double? A triple? Give me some time, and I'll get that much. My lady, this isn't about Mora. <sighs> I don't know what you think of us Eremites, but let me say this. I like Mora, but I'll never go against my principles. That's why I'm here looking for you. Sure, it's an order from my employer, but my conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. And knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is gonna hurt ya. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. No, you're wrong. I'm aware of my limits, and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. And they know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. They still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just change the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time already. This should be old news to you. <sighs> Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father. And I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to. 
because she saved me. The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. This is my life and my last chance. So I want to do something meaningful. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Yes, I'm sure. At least, it is to me. <sighs> Fine, I won't ask you to return home anymore. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination, not because I agree with you. Thank you, Dia. <sighs> Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up. And I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. Uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mora. Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So, I'll let you hire me, my lady. This way, everyone wins. As for the pay, let's say mm, half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Okay, deal. Yay! Looks like they've reached an understanding! <laughs> I'm fine, really. I just feel a little tired now that things have calmed down. <sighs> My lady, stop trying to look tough. We're already in a tavern, so let's rest up and grab some grub. I'm sorry for worrying you two. If you don't mind, I'd like for you to join us. Sure! After you rest up, we want to hear more about Lesser Lord Kusanali. Well, if it isn't Dia, haven't seen you in nearly half a year. Word on the street is that you're a bodyguard for the Homayani family now. <laughs> Don't you find that kind of work boring? Nah, you get used to it. How about a menu over here? You got it, huh? Isn't this little Miss Homayani herself? We don't get to serve personages like you very often. We'll be sure to prepare our very best. Thank you, sir, but there's no need. I don't have a lot of Mora on me, and I really ought to save as much as I can. Uh, but please bring these two the best food you have. They're my new friends, so I want to be a good host for them. Yeah! We're already super grateful for everything you told us about Lesser Lord Kusanali. How about our coconut charcoal cakes? They're our signature snack, and they run cheap. Look, other customers over there are eating some now. Uh, they look kind of burnt and dry. Uh, bye, my will pass. Hey, come on! Paimon has personal preferences too, you know. Dunyarzad. We asked a lot of people when we first arrived, and almost nobody was interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. So, what made you want to follow her? Well, remember when you asked me if I knew how to meet the Dendro Archon? Even though I don't know how, I think I've actually seen her before. Huh? Really? Yes, it was when I was a child. At the time, my illness had kept me bedridden for the better part of a year. I was stuck inside and couldn't make any friends, and my parents did their best to find treatments for me. But even then, the Akasha didn't have any helpful information. My younger self no longer had any hopes or dreams. One flare-up was so bad that I was in a semi-conscious state for several days. Then one night, I woke up alone in my room. I was terrified. My body was paralyzed. Even if I cried, there was no sound. At that moment, an ethereal voice spoke in my mind. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Dunyarzad, don't be scared. You don't have to cry. Huh? Who are you? How do you know my name? Um, how 
do I explain this? You might not be able to understand, but actually, I know everything about you. Really? Of course. I know that you're scared of thunder, that you hate taking medicine every morning, and that you love counting the petals on your mom's skirt. Wow, you really do know everything. Junior is odd. Is there anything you want? What? Not really. I can't go anywhere or do anything. Huh? But aren't you a child? All children have wishes. Tell me what you want, and maybe I can make it happen. But... Uh, can you make my illness go away? Oh... I'm sorry. But I'm not powerful enough to do that right now. Then... can you be my friend? After that, the voice said, Okay, I'll be your friend. Although my body was suffering during those days, that voice encouraged me and told me many wondrous things. Beyond my window was the flourishing Sumeru city. Beyond the city was a lush rainforest. And beyond that was the wall of Samiel, deserts, and all of Tevat. Once I finally made it through that bout of illness, I couldn't hear that voice anymore. I told my mother about it, but she said that I must have been dreaming. But I know that that voice wasn't a figment of my imagination. Before that, I had never heard of Tevat. Yes, for sure. If it weren't for that voice, I would have never grown curious about the outside world. Nor would I have learned how to read and enjoy so many books. That voice sparked a desire for wisdom. It had to have been the Dendro Archon. I've been hoping for a chance to repay her kindness. In fact, I was running around today to help prepare the Subzerus Festival for her. What's the Subzerus Festival? It's Lesser Lord Cusinelli's birthday, which was the day that she was found by the sages. It's actually an old holiday that originally celebrated Greater Lord Rukadavata's birthday. When she passed away, the holiday eventually became a celebration of the Lesser Lord's birthday. I heard everyone was overjoyed when they welcomed her back to Sumeru. In those days, the festival was a huge deal. But because of the Academia's influence, people have gradually lost interest in the festival. The Academia actively participates in Sumeru's many holidays dedicated to Greater Lord Rukudavata. But when it comes to the Subzeros Festival, forget any funding. They practically act like it doesn't exist. Maybe they see Lesser Lord Kusanali's birth as confirmation of Greater Lord Rukadavata's death. So they're reluctant to celebrate it. Aww, but that's awful! It is. It's absolutely terrible. Sure, the Greater Lord founded Sumeru, but hasn't Lesser Lord Kusanali been the one quietly protecting us for the past few hundred years? <clears throat> Just remember that we're still out in public. Don't get too carried away now. I know that people over by the Grand Bazaar still hold the sub Festival to this day. But I hadn't met any of them before, so I was never able to contribute. But recently, I made a friend there who also follows Lesser Lord Kusanali. I gave her my savings because I want her to throw a wonderful festival this year. That's the least I could do for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Hold on, my lady, does this friend happen to be Nilu, the one who sends flowers to the estate? Yes, that's her. Hmm, I saw her leaving the other day with a nervous look on her face. It seemed like she was hiding something in her arms. Did you give her something? Uh, yes. Uh, initially, I didn't have much more up prepared, so I had Nilu sell one of my skirts. I've agreed with Nilu to meet up at the Grand Bazaar today, and see how things are coming along. Dia, would you accompany me? Sure, that's quite the trip though. I'll carry you. No, that would be too much, even for you. You might as well just accept the lift. If I let you walk, who knows how long it'll take us. And if anything happens to you, then I'd really never hear the end of it from your father. But of course! Inilu will be thrilled to hear there are more people interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali. Sorry I'm late, Nilu. Oh, Dunyarzad. 
it was taking you so long that I assumed you got trapped at home, but you made it in the end. Uh-oh. But if Dia's here, that means you got caught, right? You could say that, uh, but everything worked out. She's on our side now. <laughs> uh, not completely. Oh, and who are these two? Oh, meet the Traveler and Paimon, my two newest friends. They're visitors who just arrived at Sumera City and are looking for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali. So you're followers from another land? Oh, really? Well, that's okay. You're still invited to the Sabzerus Festival. By the way, Dunyarzad, we've already started decorating the Grand Bazaar. It looks spectacular, thanks to your generous contribution. You're very welcome. It's the only thing I could do. Do you still have enough Mora? Uh, probably? But don't sweat it. We've already finished renovating the stage. Come on, I'll show you. Not bad. <laughs> the last time I was here, the stairs were full of holes. The stairs were nothing. A little while ago, we discovered that the tree above the stage had a huge chunk of bark ready to fall off. Mr. Zubair was worried sick. We reported it to the Academia many times, but they never sent anyone to deal with it. We didn't want anything bad happening, so we were going to cancel all the stage performances. Oh, probably because it was the theater asking. The Academia looks down on performers like us. They probably think it would be best if the theater closed down completely. We can't let that happen, though. Not only would everyone involved in the theater go hungry, but then we wouldn't be able to hold the Subzerus Festival anymore. Thank the Dendra Archon for doing your Zod. But the more she gave us, we hired someone to patch up the tree, and we also gave the stage a much-needed makeover. The stage is going to be even prettier when it's festival time. I can't wait for you to see it. And I can't wait to see you on the stage. You've been practicing so long already. It's almost time for your dream to become reality. <laughs> it's our dream. I'll do my best for the two of us. Milu, what are you going to be doing at the festival? She'll be dancing the dance of Subzerus. The most important performance at the Subzeros Festival. Dunyarzad, have you told him the origin of this holiday? I only told them about the Greater Lord and Lesser Lord so far. Okay, then I'll tell you two about how this holiday came to be. According to legend, the Subzeros Festival was originally the Goddess of Flowers' birthday celebration for the Greater Lord. A long, long time ago, on one of Greater Lord Rukadevata's birthdays, her friends threw her a celebratory banquet. Some of the gods got drunk. One started playing music, and the greater lord started singing, so the goddess of flowers began to dance. As she danced upon the grass, countless beautiful Padisars began to bloom wherever she stepped. Those brilliant purple flowers became her dazzling stage. All the gods clamored, oh, if only time could stop at this very moment. Of course they did. When people mention the gods, they always think of the Archon War. But Sumeru's gods also had happy times. Although they aren't around anymore, they're preserved in our tradition of dance. This outfit I'm wearing is apparently based on how the Goddess of Flowers looked. Though we're just tiny people compared to the Divine, we still have to do our best to make sure that the birthday girl feels loved on her special day. Nilu, you of all people will definitely be able to convey our well wishes to the Dendro Archon. I also noticed that you went the extra mile and scattered Padisaras around the stage. <laughs> they symbolize the Goddess of Flowers, after all. It's just a shame that all the real Padisaras went extinct after her death. Yeah. The Greater Lord brought forth Padisaras in memory of the Goddess of Flowers. But she ultimately could never truly replicate that beautiful purple. Thinking about the Goddess of Flowers dance makes me wish I could have seen it. 
If my stage were anything like that, uh, I'd be thrilled if I had just two real body Saras on the stage. Uh, so, Traveler and Paimon, what do you think? Interested in the Sabzerus Festival? Will you two be coming? All of Lesser Lord Kusanali's followers will be there for her birthday. It'll be a good opportunity for you to learn more about her. Ooh, Paimon thinks that's a great idea! Hey, come on! There's nothing wrong with enjoying a festival. Besides, it's Lesser Lord Kusanali's birthday. She'll be happy to have more people who are celebrating it. <laughs> so how about we all attend the Subzerus Festival together? Junior Zod, let me show you which stage decorations we've picked out so far. Traveler and Paimon, if that doesn't sound interesting to you, then feel free to explore the area. Everyone at the Grand Bazaar loves Lesser Lord Kusanali, and we're all looking forward to the Sabzerus Festival. In that case, we'll take a look around! What's with your yellow hair? And why do your clothes look so funny? Are you an outlander? Did you know that the Sabzerus Festival is about to happen? There'll be loads of fun things to do at the festival. But the best part is when Ferris, the Knight of Flowers, passes out candy to everyone. Milu, your outfit looks amazing. There's also something different about you from when we first met up. <laughs> I thought I'd add a little extra pizzazz to my dress for the festival. See? Wow, did you sew all that yourself? Uh-huh. Sewing is a fundamental skill for everyone in the theater company because we make all our own costumes. Did you know that Mr. Zubair not only can make costumes, but props too? <laughs> I've noticed that you can't keep your eyes off that crown over there. Would you like to try it on? <laughs> May I? Of course. The legends say that the goddess of flowers had beautiful horns on her head, so this crown was made to reflect that. Ah, <sighs> oh, Zod, you look absolutely stunning with it on. It's like I'm looking at the goddess of flowers herself. Things are really shaping up, and there's a buzz around the festival this year. We're expecting people from all over to come by this year and buy things during the festivities. Don't be fooled into thinking that Sumeru City has the best of everything. Some festival snacks are only offered here in the Grand Bazaar. And when it comes to musicians, dancers, or singers, the Grand Bazaar's got the best of the best. Sure, those folks at the Academia might not like it, but what's a festival without song and dance? Huh. Revamping the stage for the festival couldn't have been easy, that's for sure. I bet this year's festival will be one to remember. I don't know much about the Grand Bazaar, but I do know that the residents here have a penchant for song and dance. <laughs> Two things that the Academia doesn't particularly approve of. Oh, and the perfume sold around here is a lot better than what you'll find elsewhere. The fragrances are longer lasting and they're gentler on your skin and... Uh, I mean, <clears throat> that's uh, what I've heard at least. Life is ah, so dull. dancing at the Subzeru's festival. You know, I also danced when I was younger. As a child, I even asked my grandmother why we performed the dance for the Lesser Lord when it was originally done to honor the Greater Lord. My grandmother said that Greater Lord Rukadavata is a beloved deity and honored by all. And Lesser Lord Kusanali is too. 
If the goddess of flowers ever knew lesser Lord Kusanali, then she would certainly have wished to be her friend and hold celebrations for her too. The Subzeru's festival has been losing its appeal over the years. Hmm. That is, until a wealthy benefactor stepped in this year and brought the festival back to life. I heard she forked out a lot of Mora to make it all happen. Hey! Is that who Paimon thinks it is? It looks like... Catherine! Adventurer's Guild doesn't require any complicated functions. But saying and doing the same old things over and over again can get pretty monotonous. Like watching the same Fontaine movie day after day. But take you two for example. You travel across to Vat to enrich your lives and gain new experiences. Well, we enjoy traveling across to Vat and all that, but we're mainly looking for clues about his sister. Yes, you should keep searching. Sometimes the answers we're looking for aren't necessarily at our intended destination. Instead, they're found along the way. Huh. Haven't we heard someone say something pretty similar recently? Uh, anyways, what brings you out here, Catherine? No, not particularly. I guess you could say that I'm loving the recent atmosphere here. If festivals bring happiness to everyone, then that's where their true value lies. Oh, it looks like it's about time for me to be heading back now. Alright, we'll see you next time at the Adventures Guild! Oh, by the way, thanks for connecting us with the Aramites. We've already made some great friends in Sumeru City thanks to you! I'm sure you two will get along well with the people here. You've already been blessed by the element of Dendro, after all. <laughs> See you around! Hmm. There's something really different about Catherine today. Hey, Traveler. Paimon. Oh, hey, Dia! What's going on? I've got something to tell ya. My lady knows you're looking for ways to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali, and she's been trying to come up with a way to help you. Well, I have an idea that might help. Are you serious? We'd love that! It might not necessarily pan out, so don't get your hopes up too much. I'll need to take you two somewhere and ask someone some questions. Uh, my lady is feeling a little worn out at the moment. Nilu's found a place for her to rest. After I take my lady home, let's meet in front of the Citadel of Regzar. Sounds like a plan! Sorry, I'm late. It took some convincing for the master and mistress to believe that Miss Dunyarzad was only sitting in the port for a while because she was in a bad mood. Anyway, I guess I should be thanking you. I haven't seen Miss Dunyarzad that happy in a long time. If it wasn't for you two, she probably would have been caught and dragged back much earlier. You sure sound a whole lot nicer than when we first met, Dia. Who would have thought you had such a soft spot for Dunyarzad? It's called being a professional. I'm a bodyguard, and I work for whoever's paying. <laughs> Look, Dia's blushing. Ugh, listen, you two. I don't expect to be working for Miss Dunyarzad very long, but I hope to finish things on a positive note if possible. Let's cut the chit-chat and head into the Citadel. 
We'll see if the person I know has a way for you two to meet with the Lesser Lord. Oh, hey, Chief. Ha, <laughs> did ya? What are you doing here? And well, well. Didn't expect to see you three together. <laughs> I take it you all know each other already? Mm-hmm. We met this morning after the Adventurers Guild pointed us to Ozfan for more info. No kidding. Hmm. Huh. So, where's Ruksha? I thought I'd help these two out by asking about the theft. Anything you can tell him? Rukshaw's gone over to the Academia. The Grand Sage recently ordered Sumeru City to begin bolstering its defenses, so people from all over have been called back to the city. <clears throat> Since you've already mentioned the theft, I suppose I might as well tell him what we know. Appreciate it, Chief. Uh, theft? Sorry, what the heck are you guys talking about? Just recently, the Academia lost something. And there's a chance the item is connected with the Dendro Archon. This case might just somehow help you in meeting her. <laughs> I suppose that's one way to look at it. But if you ask me, the case is more about the Academia than anything else. Let me fill you in. The Academia recently sent a convoy to pick up an important package from Aru Village. Word got out, and the convoy was robbed on its way back. The Grand Sage took the whole matter very seriously. Not only did he dispatch the Matra, but also enlisted our help in the search for leads. All we know so far is that whatever was stolen is currently in Port Ormos. You two have heard of Port Ormos, haven't you? It's the largest commercial port in all of Sumeru. You can travel there by leaving Sumeru City and heading south along the river. The Academia's grip isn't long enough to reach all the way to Port Ormos, so the city's a little more laid back, meaning the population's also a mixed bag. You never know who you'll meet there. Apparently what was lost has a great deal to do with the Akasha, knowledge, and even the gods. I'm afraid I don't have any other details for you, though. If you're interested, maybe you can head to Port Ormos and ask around yourselves. If you want my advice, Try introducing yourselves as students of the Academia once you're there. Are you serious, Chief? All the Academia students are in Sumeru City, you know. Why should they pretend to be students in Port Ormos? <laughs> if you're also interested, just go there and see what happens. Count me out. I've got plenty of work to do here for the Homayani family. And take it from me, if you two really do decide to visit Port Ormos, you'd best watch your backs. Let's just say that the Eremites there aren't nearly as friendly as those here in Sumeru City. There are even some extremists who go around shouting slogans like, Retake Sumeru for the Scarlet King! Where it is that more and more are joining their movement. They're becoming a real headache for Chief and the others. You bet they are. The Scarlet King's been dead for thousands of years. Now they start spreading rumors of his return. Ridiculous. Not everyone's like you, Chief. Even the desert natives who abandoned their homes in the wilderness still wish to have a god of their own. <sighs> well, Traveler, that's about all the information we have for you. Thanks, Dia! And you too, Osfan! Since we've gathered all we could for the moment in Sumeru City, let's head to Port Ormos and see what we can find next! Miss Dunyarzad is looking forward to seeing you both at the Subzerus Festival, so be sure to get yourselves back here in time for that. Good, then we'll see you both at the Subzerus Festival. All these Sumeru scholars seem to wear Akasha terminals, so they can get information from the Akasha system. It's like they're carrying an interactive encyclopedia with them wherever they go! Oh, Paimon's kinda jealous. Well, I'm not jealous. I have an even better encyclopedia that automatically follows me around, gives me the A to Z on everything into that, and the best part is, it can even talk. Huh? Was that a compliment? Aw, you're making Paimon blush. <laughs> Paimon definitely doesn't know as much as an encyclopedia. A to Y at most. 
Well, you know, maybe if you ate a little less, you'd have room for Z, too. <laughs>